In a recent study by the KTH Royal Institute of Technology in Sweden, they compared the performance including throughput, response time, and memory usage of these web server technologies. Node.js, Information Internet Services, that's used with the .NET ecosystem, Hachi HTTP Server, which is used with PHP or Java, and also Go. They chose these in particular because of their different ways of handling requests. The Apache HTTP server takes a multi-process approach where each request gets its own process. Information Internet Services, aka IIS, uses a multi-threaded approach where each request gets its own thread. And remember, a process can have multiple threads. Node.js, on the other hand, uses a single process and single thread. This is called single process event-driven or SPED architecture, and it leverages asynchronous operations to overlap certain tasks. In Go, each request gets its own Go routine, and Go routines do not directly map to OS-level threads like the multi-thread approach. However, many Go routines can exist in a single OS thread, so it's essentially splitting a thread into more threads, which is just application level threading. And these four servers were tested under both CPU and IO intensive workloads. The CPU was calculating Fibonacci numbers, IO was making a query to a external database. We're going to take a look at the results for the mixed test, which incorporated both CPU and IO intensive workloads, because this is most applicable for web dev projects. Typically, you need to perform some CPU intensive logic, and then you need to query a external resource like a database. So looking at this report, the first thing we have here is a throughput comparison. And Go outperforms all of the other technologies. Uh, we can see here that Apache actually has the lowest transactions per second compared to all of the other servers. And remember, Apache takes a multi-process approach to handling requests. Now you're probably wondering, why is Apache performing so bad? Why is it so bad to allocate a whole process for each request? So let's say we have a request. And with the multi-process approach, we're going to allocate a process to this request. And a process has its own memory allocated to it as well. So we have this chunk of memory and this process and this request gets that. Now, as more requests come in, a lot of these processes get spawned. To actually run the logic of this process, we have to schedule it on our CPU. So the server will have a bunch of cores, which are just another word for CPU. Let's say this web server is a really tiny server with only two cores. So what's going to happen is these requests will get scheduled on both these cores and they're going to run in parallel. Now, let's say this request makes a call to IO like an external database or something like that, that doesn't require any work from this CPU just yet because it's being handed off to uh, some other system. We can actually take this process off the CPU and move this process onto the CPU. So this one goes there and then this one gets moved off the CPU. This process is called context switching. So the scheduler is some program that keeps track of all of these processes and knows when to put them on the CPU. But the context switching part, that takes up time and it takes up computational resources. So what happens when there are so many requests, that means there are going to be lots of processes. And soon you're spending more time context switching then you are actually performing logic. And this is called 
thrashing. For this reason, a multi-process approach is not good for workloads with lots of requests. Many processes get spawned, they all have to be scheduled, and a lot of context switching occurs. There's overhead to this context switching, and you often get thrashing where no work is being done. We see also that the multi-threaded approach with the IIS server is second best, and then Node.js is third best. In a multi-threaded paradigm, instead of giving each request its own process, we have to still create a process, add in a squiggle for a thread. So these are threads and multiple requests can be handled by this singular process. This request is just going to go there, this one's going to go to this thread, and this one's going to go to that thread. So you can see that we for one, allocate less memory because now these three requests all share this memory instead of all of this memory in the multi-process approach. A disadvantage of this approach is if one of these threads is blocking, it blocks all of the other threads from execution because they're in the same process. So that does not happen with the process. No request can block another request because they're all running in different processes. And only one thread can run at a time. However, the overhead for switching which thread is running is much less than the overhead of switching which process is running. So even if these are scheduled, the unit of scheduling, so these actually get scheduled on the CPU core, it's still going to be less overhead to switch them because they're lighter weight, they contain less state, all of these things. Let's look at the response time comparison. This is pretty much identical to the throughput in terms of the places each technology is in. Go has the least or fastest response time, so the lowest is actually the best in this case. Uh, Apache, again, with the highest response time. And you could use similar reasoning to speculate why uh, the multi-process approach takes the most time here. Moving on, we have memory allocation. So here we see that Go, again, outperforms all the other technologies with not a lot of memory allocation. Node.js actually has the most memory allocated. And one speculation I have for this is because Node.js relies on asynchronous operations and these asynchronous operations have to have callbacks, so the program knows what to do when that function completes. Those functions and the state at that time of the async request needs to get stored somewhere in the event loop, in the JavaScript runtime, whatever you want to call it. So that may take up a lot of memory. But this study didn't go into that fine detail, so that is just my speculation. If you think it could be another reason, please let me know in the comments. From this performance test, we can see that Go outperforms Apache, IIS, and Node.js as it has the highest throughput and lowest memory consumption. And I would like to see the study investigate how and why these different paradigms might relate to performance. I gave you some of my speculations, but again, this was not tested in the study or mentioned in the discussion. So I would like to hear what you guys think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name's Alexa, and if you want to see more, subscribe. Thanks for watching.